You can see that Donald Trump and Hillary Clinton were the top two candidates, um, with Donald Trump being just a slight advantage over Hillary. Um, kind of interesting, isn't it? I really felt like that, you know, with a presidential election as um, intense and emotional as this one was, that people were going to be voting based on values and, uh, you know, and ethics background and, and background. And, but uh, according to this algorithm, <laughs> it may have put more of um, uh, the trust and competence. That's what they came out with of the algorithm is the face that has the most trust and competence. Um, so it's, it's kind of funny how it shows up. Bugs uh, me just a little or a lot. <laughs> <laughs> So how can we uh, use that to um, be on this level of trust and competence? Obviously, we don't want to have Voldemort's face. <laughs> um, you know, we talked about all of these before. So how can we have that uh, competence face uh, and trustworthy face? So I kind of want to talk about that a little bit. Um, let's see. I, I don't remember where that one was going. Oh, this oh. is the new stuff I threw in. Oh, oh, That's cool. That's why you don't recognize it. Okay, <laughs> so you can, <laughs> do you want to say something yeah. about it? <laughs> yeah, so I'll do this for a little bit. Um, yeah, and so if, if people are getting elected off of this, then, then it's going to be a factor on whether or not you get a job too. It's, it's interesting too, because at this time in the industry, in the hiring industry, they're trying to focus on being less biased, but also more diverse at the same time. <laughs> but we're trying to be less biased and try to make more objective decisions when we are subjective human beings. We are very influenced by what we see. And so we're, we're going to talk about some, some first impressions um, to, before the interview even begins. If this is things that can help you to get the interview. Uh, first impressions before you actually even meet someone. Okay? Now, uh, where a lot of times this starts is on LinkedIn. Uh, what percentage of recruiters do you think are using LinkedIn now to find candidates? Too many. It's very close to 100. It's 94% of uh, recruiters are now using LinkedIn. So as part of our overall career management strategy, LinkedIn is going to be key. Right? We want to make sure that we're, we're leveraging that and using it the way we can. And we, I did an experiment yesterday with Apex Systems. So we, we did this one with this poor guy. Uh, he's changed his picture since then, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> and we, we saw this word cloud. Um, this, a similar thing will happen, though, when a recruiter is looking either at our resume or our LinkedIn page. We're still only going to have moments to capture their attention and to, to draw them in. Uh, how much, and this, this is referring to the resume, but I'm surmising, I'm guessing that it's going to be the same with LinkedIn, maybe even faster. How long do you think a recruiter spends as they're going through resumes? How long do they spend on each one for their initial screening? Yep, six seconds. Six seconds. <laughs> so in six seconds, I mean, p picture the, the recruiter. They got a stack of resumes, and they're flipping through them. Six seconds, and they're putting them in either a reject pile or onto the next round pile. <laughs> you have six seconds to capture, capture their eye and to get them to want to talk to you further, to take you to the next step. So um, I'm not going to do this for this part, but at the webinar yesterday, I did this gut uh, experiment like we did with the guy's face. We did it with some people's LinkedIn profiles. And what we found was that we'd get similar results. People would have a gut feel about the overall personal branding on someone's LinkedIn page. And that's going to be important as we are trying to develop our own brand, our own uh, persona on LinkedIn. Uh, is it going to be congruent? The, the things that we put on there, is it going to be congruent with that personal brand? Just yeah. a shout out, it works both ways. So when I was looking, for a job, I actually saw Jeff's profile. I go to LinkedIn too, and, Let's do it again. and I was like, "What? <laughs> is it body language expert? What is that like?" And it just Which makes everybody me. nervous when they come into the job interview when they read that. It was a nice challenge for me because I started researching, you know, what to do, and uh -huh. like what body language. But um, it was just this curiosity of that sounds interesting. I'm a seasoned professional. I've worked at Microsoft and Ancestry.com, and 
so it does work both ways. Uh -huh. Especially in the candidates market right now, where the top engineers, companies are trying to get them to come work for, for the company. They, they're having to sell them on coming rather than the other way around. Yeah, and sometimes when I'm mean, if they're nervous about being interviewed by a body language person, I'll just kind of look up and look them up and down and go, huh. <laughs> <laughs> You're to, evil. I don't, I don't really do that. I'm nice. I'm a nice interviewer. <laughs> so, so six seconds, where are they looking then in that six seconds? Where, where is their eye drawn? I have a partnership with a company called Sensum that does experiments like this one. This wasn't done by him, but he does some of these same things. He's got an EEG machine, facial expression tracking, eye tracking to see where people's attention are, is drawn and what drives behavior. Uh, so this is one that they did on a resume. This is, they, they had a camera on a recruiter as he's looking at a resume and seeing where his eyes were darting around. Here in a second, I'll tell you specifically what they're looking at. Uh, it it's almost seems random, but it's not. They're scanning it for some very specific things. That's for resumes. For a website, they found that, probably especially in Western culture, because we read left to right and up to down, that will kind of make these F patterns with our eyes. And so uh, savvy web designers will use this to try to, to direct attention to where people want. Like if you have a button that you want someone to click on, you can use this uh, as one of the, the strategies to get them to look there. So if we take the resume eye tracking, we take the website. This one is actually on a LinkedIn page, but as you can tell, it's kind of an older format for LinkedIn. It doesn't look like this anymore. But it's still hovered around this upper left-hand quadrant. That's where people's eyes hovered the most. Um, they've actually changed the format now, I'm guessing because of this tendency. So in fact, let's see if I have a, I, I can show this one. This is not a, this is not a Facebook logo. <laughs> this is the F pattern. But this is the format that, that LinkedIn uses now. So what are we going to see most? And what are we going to see first? My smiling face, because it's up there in the corner. You can see this cover picture. And then probably after that, you'll see the title and then, then the description as I'm making this pattern with my eyes. So if we're ordering this in order of importance, that's where you're going to want to really nail down the first impression for your LinkedIn. Make sure you have that stuff covered. Even a step before this, though, if uh, they haven't actually got to your page yet, I'm a recruiter searching for a web developer, and I type that in the search, and it's going to give me a list of candidates. What's going to make Jordan stand out from Eudine? What's going to make me click on his name and pull up his profile uh, or just pass him by? Our brains are making those same quick decisions about friend, foe, irrelevant. You don't want to be irrelevant. You don't want to just be a name in a long list of, of candidates. Uh, at my last company, I would do, we'd have about 12 interns a year that we'd hire. And so we'd go out recruiting at the colleges uh, two, like two or three times a year. And particularly at Brigham Young University, when we'd interview, they'd sit us in a, a little room, and we'd just have back-to-back 30-minute -back interviews all day long. And the challenge for the, the candidates was, how do I differentiate myself? Almost everybody in the lineup had taken the exact same classes. So it felt like it was just copy, paste, copy, paste, copy, paste, copy, paste. And, and so for them, if they were right smack dab in the middle, what was going to make them stand out? And that's what this is kind of like. LinkedIn has millions of, of people. We want to figure out a way to capture their attention, get them to click, draw them in to our profile picture. So what elements do we have to play with here? Well, you still have a picture. You got their name. You have a title. You have where they live and what their company is they're working for. It also says what shared connections you have. That one's interesting. That one goes again to building out your network, even if it's a virtual network on LinkedIn. As a hiring manager, if I am looking for somebody and I see I have 55 shared connections with them, cool, let's see who I know that knows them so I can ask about them and, and know more about them. So there's a few things here we can manipulate. One is the, the picture. So we'll talk about the picture and what you can do to, to hack your profile picture and make it look good. Uh, the other is the, the title. We'll talk briefly about that too. And if we do those right, hopefully it sucks them in. And then I'll touch on what you should do on the rest of your LinkedIn profile picture.